Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Make a donation to PayPal if you'd like. Or watch my live streams when I have them. And think about donating there. Now today's video, something that's not discussed all that much is motherboards. Okay, and I don't mean what to do on a motherboard. I mean how to install that into the actual case. It's, a lot of people don't realize that uh, there are things to be aware of. Uh, where are the standoffs? Uh, what size motherboard will go into your case? How do you secure it properly? Because there are things that can go wrong. So, if you want to know more, stay tuned. So one of the first things you need to know when you buy your case, first check to see what kind of motherboard you're going to be buying and then check the case before you buy it to make sure it's going to accommodate your motherboard. Now if you happen to get a case and then you're like, oh, I don't know what to, what size to get, on the inside of the case, somewhere in here, it's going to say A, ATX, and it's going to say M from Micro ATX, and there, there could be other ones in there to tell you what size the case will take. All right, and what the A refers to is if you look on here, there's an A and an M, there's an A down here, and an A here, and so on and so on. When you look at your motherboard, depending on whether it's an ATX motherboard or a micro ATX, which is the only two this particular case will accommodate, other cases will take different sizes, that's the things you need to be aware of, okay? The other thing you need to be aware of is what's the size of your opening, like up here? Uh, can you put on a cooler and get behind it and secure it without having to take everything apart? Uh, is there an opening? So on the top up here, there's openings. Okay. Now these openings allow your cables to come through after the motherboard's installed. So if you look here, that's the top of where your motherboard's going to go. So this is your space. And above it is your openings for your cables. So that helps you have better cable management. And it also gives you an idea of how you can route them. So in other words, how you can put them up through the back of the system, hide the cables, and make it look cleaner overall. So one of the other things you want to do when you're going to check your motherboard. Okay, your motherboard is going to have holes on it. Okay, where you're going to screw it to your case. So these things here, these are your standoffs. One there, here, and they're in different locations, okay? So, depending on your case, and in most cases today, uh, they're going to be secured to the system. But there are times when they're not. So another thing to keep in mind, especially with Corsair cases, is this standoff right here. Now what happens in that case is that's where you're going to put your center hole on your motherboard and that's just going to be able to lock it in place sort of um, it gives you a way to set it into the case and then put your screws on without having to fuss around too much all right so the other thing you want to do is check these standoffs okay you want to make sure that they're not loose and you want to make sure as well depending on whether it's an ATX micro ATX etc that they're in the right place. So if you have a different motherboard and you have to use one of these other screws like this one here, you're gonna to have to move some of these or whatever came with your case to put them there, you're gonna to need to put them there. If these are in there already, but they're in the wrong spot, you need to remove them, okay? Because if you don't, you could potentially short out your motherboard and before you even start, you're gonna have issues and you're not gonna know why. The other thing is, if your standoffs like these here are loose and then you tighten into them, what's going to happen is if you ever have to remove that later on, it, you're going to have a, an issue. You're going to have a hard time to get that out. Because it was already loose, when you try and remove it, it it's, it's just going to keep turning and turning and turning. And that becomes a problem. So another thing that people commonly do and make a mistake when they're putting their motherboards in their system is they forget to include the IO shield. Now what happens is the lettering on the outside of this faces out and there's an opening on your case 
it'll be on every case you want to put that in here and secure it in place because you need to do that before you put your motherboard in because otherwise you're gonna to have to take the motherboard back out to put that in there or if you decide us oh, I'm just gonna leave it that way what's gonna happen is it's gonna allow dust and stuff to come inside your case and that's gonna have an effect on its performance so that's an important thing to remember so another thing to keep in mind is when you get your case you're gonna have extra uh, pieces that come with it so these standoffs here okay you can see there's different sizes some are bigger some are smaller and you'll get one of these here too now what these are basically a um, Phillips head so you can use that to secure your standoffs if they're loose and I'll show you what I mean by that okay so see I've put this on the end of the screwdriver when you put it over top of your standoff you can just check them just give it a bit of a snug you just want to make sure that's in there nice and snug and you do that for each one of them and if that comes off just put it back on no problem and then you get down and you want to check each and every one of them on your system okay that way you're going to know that each one of these standoffs not this one because that one's already fixed in place but all your other standoffs you want to make sure that they are definitely secured to your system nowadays that shouldn't be an issue but there are some cases out there some budget cases that uh, it is still an issue sometimes so before installing your motherboard you want to see what kind of screw you're going to put into that standoff so as you can see in figure two here it shows you what it is now if you're in doubt simply put it on your screwdriver and before you put the motherboard in just try and screw it into the uh, hole if it goes in no problem then it's fine if you have to force it at all then you're likely using the wrong one okay your motherboard manual will tell you which one it is and then you shouldn't have any issues so just to show you the one that came with this particular case okay so the one that came with this case looks like this all right nothing too fancy to it and again just check it if you're in question of whether it's the right one for the case or not just screw it in and it should go in very simply so getting on back to the motherboard so when you're looking at your motherboard you want to know where do I fit these over the standoffs so on your motherboard you can see these little holes and they have like a dotted bunch of dots around them okay each one of them all right not that one okay this one here okay when you look at all those now on this motherboard there's nine okay and it's it's usually about the same on most motherboards the smaller micro or just not quite the full size ATX motherboards could be slightly different but as long as you've secured all those in the right spots to your case then you're going to be fine and the outer edge of this I don't know if let me see if I can get in there on that a little better so one of the things to keep in mind is this little dotted outer edge um, does not conduct electricity so the, it basically creates a zone if you will uh, to protect the screw from any kind of shorting out of the motherboard all that kind of good stuff so that's what that's designed for is this just a, the little golden edge here okay and as long as your screw falls within there which it will um, then you won't have any issues so this is not the actual motherboard by the way that I'm going to be using in this build okay so this motherboard is just is an example it's just an old motherboard that I had um, so that I'm not touching the new one and causing possible static uh, issues with the motherboard or anything like that nature um, but one of the other things to remember when you're putting it in your case okay like we mentioned putting in the um, IO shield okay so that's where this is going to fit into the back of your case so when you put it in this is the part that's going to go onto the back side of your case so that's how you can help to orient the, the motherboard to your case so one more consideration you might want to think about before you actually put your motherboard in the case is do you need more room to work with when you put your power supply in and all that kind of good stuff if you have a removable hard drive cage okay which this one is you can take it out and just move it out of the way maybe you don't even need that much room just set it aside and that gives you more room to work with your power supply down here the other thing to consider is you've got all your cables 
All right, so I would suggest untying them all and then just feeding them back into the other side of the case. And that just gets everything out of your way. It gives you more room to play with. Uh, you've got the hard drive cage removed. It gives you more room to do everything. And then you can start connecting everything from that point on. So I did want to show you what it looks like after you put the right I.O. shield in once the motherboard is actually in the case. So here you can see the I.O. shield fitted in place. All right. So that's just how it's going to look. So that's going to orient you when you put your motherboard in place. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the first thing we do, now this is the actual motherboard, is orient this to your I.O. shield. Now, on this one, you've got a center point here. And you're going to line it up with this here. So they should both come in and line up together once you're done. And you'll be able to see that here in a second. Now be careful this fan doesn't get in the way. So we're just going to take that out and we're going to fix that. And that'll happen sometimes. This fan cable will get in the way. So you got to figure out a way just to tuck it out of the way for now. Just keep it up top there. There. See, once I had it lined up, I went through that little hole here. Well, now that's going to hold it in place. And now these are all populated by push being pushed inside here. Now we're going to go through our holes. These little ones here. And we're going to make sure these are all lined up so you can see where they're going to go screwing in. And they should be pretty much. You might have to adjust it just ever so slight. Now we're just going to put our screws in. Now something to uh, also remember is when you get your screws for your motherboard. Now I said there's nine motherboard uh, screws to put into the standoffs. But when they give you the screws for the case, they're only going to give you eight because the one in the center is holding it in place and it doesn't need a screw. It doesn't screw in. Okay, so just to make sure you know that as well. So I've set the motherboard in place and I'm just going to secure it with the screws. Now make sure when you're putting them down that you're only snugging them down. Don't over tighten because if you do you'll, you'll strip the screws and well once you strip it there's not much else you can do after that. And that's it. It's in place. So you can see I go one, two, three, four, that would be normally five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now you're all ready to put your processor in and carry on from there. All right, everybody, so that's installing your motherboard, all the ins and outs to it. Hopefully I covered everything. If I didn't, drop me a comment, like I said before, and ask me your question, and I will get back to you. Uh, I try to answer everybody that asks me a question. And, uh, yeah, so if you like this video, hit that like. If you don't, you know what to do. Leave me a comment. Don't forget, I have a subscriber giveaway. It's only good till the 31st of July, so make sure you check it out. And if you want to leave, if you, hopefully you will subscribe if you like these videos. Donate if you feel free. You don't have to. It's up to you. Helps me to support the channel. So there's PayPal, and there's also when I do live streams. So... Hope that educated somebody, gave them some information they didn't have before. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next one. Another thing, if you've watched this far, let me know if you want to see me do live streams. I mean, I don't, I've done a few, but I don't know. I don't know if people really want to watch me doing live streams or not. I do have some ideas for what I've done in the past and what I can do in the future. 
If you want to see them, let me know. Uh, at least that'll give me an idea if people still want to see me doing those or not. And if you don't, that's fine. I may do them anyway, but just to let you know. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic, wonderful, great day. Because you are important to me. Thanks.